Hello, this is Stephen Nojiri, and this is part three of the Masashige Death Series. In this series, we're examining, ultimately it's a brief examination, we're examining Masashige's death and how it varies based on the Rufuban version of the Taiheiki versus the older versions of the Taiheiki, Ashikaga records like the Baishoron, and the Kusunoki tradition's own documentation. So in this video, we're starting off by looking at the Kusunoki Traditions documentation. So on your screen, I've provided you four different Kusunoki Traditions. The Taihekiru, which is a collection of teachings from Kusunoki family members and uh, Kusunoki retainers like Onshiwada and other individuals like Imagawa Nyoto who studied Kusunoki traditions through, through history. The majority of the teachings for the Taihekiru come from the late 1400s with some things added during the 1500s. And then this sort of final material added pre-1620. By, and we say pre-1620 because the individual adding it is dead by 1622. He's an old man, he's dead, so that's the end of the new material. Then we have the Kusunoki Kaden, which means family tradition. This is Kusunoki Masanori's line, the main line. This was never turned into a school, but it still exists. So you can say these are the core teachings. Then the Kusunoki Ryugungaku, which spawned the Nanki, or uh, AKA the Nanboku Ryu. Um, this is Kusunoki Fuden's school. This was a former military tactics academy that was opened. P students came, they paid money, they took courses, etc., etc. Then you have Kusunoki Ryu where they only use a single kanji for the name Kusunoki. And that is a specific line that comes from Kusunoki Masatsura. And this line uh, opened a school in the Sendai domain. Now, when we, so the re, so when you look at these four, the reason we're mentioning those is they all speak on the topic of Masashige's death but none of them match the Ruhuban version. They don't match that oversimplified story. All of these traditions match or more closely resemble, go along with, the version of the story that you find in the older, the older Taihekis from the early and mid 1400s. And because those also jive more with documents such as the Baishoron, you could also say that the Kusunoki tradition mirrors the version presented in the Baishoron as well. But beyond the fact that the Baishoron and the older Taihekis and the Kusunoki traditions all generally match, we also see something that comes in from the Tata Genji tradition. The Tara Genji tradition says that Kusunoki Masashige and Ashikaga Takauji were friends and that they were both students of the Tara Genji traditions. In that, in this way, they are Gungaku siblings or they are, they are siblings of the same tradition of military science. Now this may seem strange at first, but again, when we look at the oldest Taihekis, and the Baishoron and the Kusunoki traditions themselves. It seems that Masashige is clearly opposed to the idea of fighting against Ashikaga at Minatogawa. He really pushes to simply allow Ashikaga to be Shogun so that the entire war can be averted. Now this could be simply due to the more to the fact that it's a very tactical truth, very obvious tactical truth that Ashikaga was amassing far more samurai than the southern court. Basically, the majority of samurai liked Ashikaga more than they liked Nida Yoshisada. But it also suggests that, Mas that Masashige valued and believed that Ashikaga himself was actually the superior choice. Again, this could be just tactical. However, as stated earlier, the Kusunokiru, the various traditions of Kusunokiru, lore is filled with stories of Ashikaga and Kusunoki fighting alongside each other and helping each other out. Now, of course, initially they do fight at Chihaya Castle when the Ashikaga is part of the Hojo forces sieging Chihaya Castle. 
and at, the, and at this point, at the Chihaya battle, Kusunoki performs a trick specifically against Ashikaga that gets 60, I think it's 63, 60, it's 60 something of Ashikaga's men killed in one sort of swift attack. Um, and there's actually a story about them later sort of sitting around talking and uh, Ashikaga and Takoiji have a conversation, you know, years later about this particular attack where Kusunoki basically tricked him and got 60 of his men killed. So, but after Ashikaga leaves the Hojo and joins Emperor Godaigo, these two, Masashige and Ashikaga, appear to conduct several military operations together, and they, are, they seem to be on pretty good terms. During the Nakasendo Rebellion, which is after the Kemu Restoration, some, uh, some Hojo try a very short-lived rebellion. Ashi During that Nakasendo Rebellion, Ashikaga calls on Kusunoki to go assist his general, Momonoi Naotsune. So Momonoi Naotsune is serving Ashikaga, and he's fighting uh, against these Hojo uprisings during the Nakasendo Rebellion, but they're getting the better of him. Ashikaga calls on Kusunoki to go and help Momonoi Naotsune. So then Kusunoki goes, he assists Momonoi Naotsune, he teaches him his Kusunoki guerrilla tactics and takes Momonoi on as a student. Momonoi would later, interestingly enough, Momonoi would later join the Southern Court. He'd leave the Ashikaga and join the Southern Court and use these Kusunoki tactics alongside Kusunoki's son Masanori to, to defeat the Ashikaga several times and score many victories for the Southern Court. So just in the Kusunokiru lore and the other historical documents, we see very clear records of there being a comrade-in-arms relationship between Ashikaga and Kusunoki. We also know that Kusunoki studied the Tata Genji tradition and that Ashikaga studied the Tata Genji tradition. Now that doesn't come from the Tata Genji tradition itself. While the Tata Genji tradition says that they studied it, independent of the Tata Genji tradition, we see the records of Kusunoki studying the Genji tactics and Ashikaga studying the Genji tactics. Interestingly enough, Ashikaga himself is recorded in several places, mostly in things like the Baishoron go in great detail about it actually, about how Ashikaga makes a big deal about following the Genji traditions in order to bring constant luck and victory, about how he's constantly, oh well this needs to be this color because it's this way in the tradition, or this needs, you know, if we're going to do this we need to make it look like this in order, you know, for victory. So the Baishoron records him being very mindful about Genji traditions during his campaigns, but ironically while he's following all of these protocols of Tata Genji tradition and OA Genji tradition, uh, he fails to follow the most important part of the tradition, which is serving the emperor. Anyway, both Kusunoki and Tata and Ashikaga, both of them are clearly recorded to have studied Tata Genji traditions. But did they study the traditions together? Probably not. They, they they did recognize each other as fellow students of the tradition, but they almost certainly did not study the traditions together. To be clear, the Tata Genji traditions say that they both studied the traditions. It doesn't actually say they studied it together. It mentions that they are, you know, both followers of the tradition, but, but the probability that they studied together at the same time is really low. Um, basically, we just have to look at their biographical data. It's highly improbable they studied at the same place at the same time. You have, you know, one guy is on this side of the country, one guy's on this side of the country over here. So they they both studied the tradition, but they did not study it together. However, so again, let's be clear. That's why they're called siblings. But they because they both studied the same tradition and they recognize that they are both students of the same tradition. So there was a respect due to each other for being students of the same tradition. This also, and from a combination of them both knowing that they've studied the same Tata Genji tradition and all of their experiences of 
fighting alongside each other through the Kemu restoration. This explains why Ashikaga seemed so upset when Masashige died, but why at the time the southern army didn't seem to care too much about Masashige's passing. So let's close this out with these final points. Masashige's death seems a bigger deal initially to the Ashikaga side. The Jino Shotoki doesn't even bother to record his death, and his death may have been a bigger part of the Taiheiki simply because Ashikaga Tadayoshi was the original editor of the Taiheiki. He wasn't the writer, but he was the person in charge of editing it. And because he was in charge of editing it, this is pr probably why Masashige is in there as much as he is. And remember, the Ashikaga had control of the Taiheiki ever since. So again, this may be why he's in the Taiheiki as much as he is. The Rufuban, or the mass-produced Taiheiki, doesn't contain the older and the more detailed parts that the 1400s copies contain. Simply put, the Rufuban version from the 1600s is slimmed down and oversimplified. It's a good place to start, but it's not really a great place to go if you want deep, in-depth study of what the Taiheiki actually records. Masashige chose to fight in Minatogawa because he refused to defect or to go absent without leave or to run away. He, but he was torn over having to fight in Minatogawa and he held a big meeting at Sakurai to prepare his sons and retainers to take over for him after he died. Finally, the Kusunoki traditions themselves retain the teachings and the historical data that support the older documents such as the 1400s Taiheiki and the Baishoron. In other words, in the tradition of Kusunoki's own descendants and followers, we see what is recorded in the tradition, and it matches closer to the older Taihekis and to the Baishoron than to things like the Ruhuban version of the Taiheiki. And that is it for this video. As always, um, these videos are meant to be brief and they are meant to be to inspire you or to give you a starting off point. The material in this video is copywritten by me. So please do not steal this material. Please do not take it. Please do not copy it. Again, it, I hope it inspires you. I hope that it sets you off on your own investigations and explorations, but please be respectful.